Hey guys, so today I'm going to be taking a look at an open source operating system, but rather than of the usual Linux variety, today I'm going to be trying out something different. Today, if you haven't worked out already, I'm going to be checking out Android X86, which is an attempt to port the ever so popular Android operating system, which is usually found on mobile phones and tablets, across to the desktop. And today I'm just going to take a bit of a brief look and see uh, if it's any good. So, uh, this at the moment isn't the full uh, final version of Android x86. They're still in the development stages. What I've got here is the second release candidate, which I will of course link to down in the description below if you'd like to try out on perhaps a virtual machine as I am doing so right now. Uh, but at the moment, I don't think there's anyone involved with the project, or certainly not myself, that would recommend trying it on a mission critical mas machine, a machine that you might need to do work or anything on. Um, but uh, yeah, this is just an attempt to get Android working on the desktop and uh, Let's see if it's any good. So I have got the live CD version um, running on this particular virtual machine, uh, which as far as I can tell is identical to the installed version. The only difference with the installed version is that your changes save after a reboot. Um, now you can tell right off the bat that it's a direct mobile port, um, which obviously they're not trying to hide because the operating system is called Android x86. Um, but uh, you have to scroll. That does involve the, the drag type of scrolling. So as you can see here, I've got a mouse but it effectively acts as a finger. Uh, so uh, I've got the just the standard Android browser up here at the moment. And uh, yeah, this is the release I've got down here. Android uh, x86 4.4 Release Candidate 2, which was released on the 20th. So this is just the standard um, browser, but it connects to the internet reasonably enough. I've got a wired connection, and it picked that up right off the bat. Uh, it did want me, it did ask me to try and um, uh, configure it with my wireless network, um, which I'm sure you can do if the wireless does work out of the box, but um, I didn't even bother with it considering I've got a wired connection. So this is the Project Chronicle um, website, projectchronicle.com, if you don't know. It's a uh, YouTube project which I'm involved in, um, but this is just, yeah, works pretty straightforward. So yeah, browsing across the board works pretty, pretty well. So. Um, Pretty much it, it works almost identical to the Android uh, operating system on my tablet. So you've got the three buttons here. This is the back button. This is the go to desktop button. And this is the check out all your open applications button. So I've checked out a few of the apps. The Twitch app seems to work well enough. Um, there's the uh, Google Drive. That's the project 14 folder with all the images there. Google Drive works pretty fine. Just, um, I think it, com it comes pre-installed with the Android operating system, which is fine, which is something which you can arguably find a use for the Android X86 because there isn't actually a native Google Drive um, application for the Linux desktop, even though there's a program called InSync. I've done a, a video of that previously, uh, which is pretty much as good as Google Drive, and you can get Google Drive working on your, your Linux desktop. You just can't use the official client. I've got Tumblr here, but as you can see, Tumblr, there's a few kinks in how Tumblr works out. Some of the um, some of the some of the backgrounds. I don't know if that's to do with the Tumblr app, the Tumblr app's compatibility with Android X86, anything like that. Um, but by and large, Tumblr does kind of work alright, barring that small cosmetic thing. Uh, what else we got here? Got Google Drive, got Twitch, YouTube works a treat. YouTube works completely out of the box. Um, what have I got here? I think I've got an episode of SciShow, which I was testing it out. Of like course. Let me ask you this then. Do you drink and enjoy milk? How about ice cream? Can you do that without getting ill? Well then congratulations, you are a mutant with a special superpower after all. Okay, so that is, yeah, that's SciShow. If you, I'm sure many of you guys are probably familiar with it. It's a channel worth checking out if you're interested in science. Um, and again, of course, you still use the click and drag type of scrolling, which is not really great on the um, on my trackable, and I'm sure it's not particularly great with the mouse. Oh, just dragged out the menu there. See, as you can see, that's kind of the mistakes you make, because obviously moving your hand and moving your finger on the uh, touchscreen is a lot easier in general than just doing so with your mouse. It's not difficult, it's just a little clunkier than you'd kind of want it to. I'm sure that if this uh, distribution were to be in it for the long haul, which they look like they are, then this might be something that might be, uh, you know, sort of worked on. But it's a cosmetic thing, it's a minor thing. At the moment it clearly looks like they're actually just trying to get the port stable and working, and I think that's all anyone can ask of them at this point. Um, but yeah, you've got your settings mode here, you've got airplane mode which turns off the connectivity. Obviously my PC doesn't have a battery or it's 
not in the virtual machine anyway. Uh, Bluetooth is off. Low, you know, you can power off here. So all standard stuff. I'm sure if you've got a um, uh, an Android phone yourself, you'll be familiar with all of this. There was one um, sort of noteworthy. I don't even. I hesitate to call it a bug because it's it's not really a bug. It's just where there's something that's set on for the mobile port that isn't hasn't really come across onto the desktop port, which is the um, rotation uh, screen rotation. The problem the problem with screen rotation that I found is that if you had an application which forced your um, device to use the portrait mode rather than the landscape mode, um, this version of Android X86 wouldn't immediately return you to the landscape mode. So you can actually end up with um, your um, operating system sort of on its side, as it were. I'll give you a demonstration. What I had to do is I had to um, install just a little app from the Google App Store just to manually choose my screen rotation. But um, if I wanted to do that, um, yeah, it would set my... Um, uh, the portrait mode for my uh, device, as it were, um, but it wouldn't automatically switch back. So, and of course, devices that wanted to use the portrait mode, um, sort of by mandatory, uh, you know, if, if, if you if the, if the um, device or if the application demanded that you use the portrait mode, um, it's very unusable. You, as you can see, I'm having trouble sort of controlling my mouse. I've got to select landscape again, and once the uh, resolution adjusts, yeah. So it's good that there's a there's an application there, uh, which is a freeware download from the App Store, um, and that sort of sorts that problem there and then, so you can get rid of that. So uh, there's also Twitter works fine out the box, the Google Play Store, there's all your Google products. So I've been playing around with this for a couple of hours now, and I've got to say I've had a fair bit of fun doing it. Uh, it's very intuitive because my tablet is an Android tablet. Um, it is still very evident that it's in its, you know, sort of, it's, it's still in its development phase. Um, but they don't make any, they don't shy away from that at all. Um, I downloaded just the uh, second release candidate ISO, booted off of it in my virtual machine, and I had no problems with it uh, at all, apart from, of course, the screen rotation and the, the bug with the Tumblr. Um, there were a few applications that weren't compatible that I expected it to be. These were usually multimedia applications, so that could actually very well be my virtual machine not being as courteous to, uh, to the operating system as it could be. But overall, I've got to say, the uh, Android x86 chaps have done a fantastic job here. Um, and I think once we start seeing some stable releases come out of the uh, development team, um, we're going to see a real use for um, a desktop Android. Um, and there are a few reasons why. Um, if I try and go back to... Like I say, the scrolling is a little bit uh, clunky, but that's obviously as a result of the touchscreen scrolling, not as the, the mouse scrolling. I, I would like to see some uh, some kind of implementation for that, perhaps. Um, but yes, uh, once they start rolling out a few final release stable distributions, what I possibly would recommend, um, off the bat, any touchscreen devices, um, this is obviously very suitable to, but then touchscreen devices tend to run on ARM architectures and would have Android on it anyway. Um, so to say that it's for a market that is, you know, it's, it's kind of a bit silly. But um, there might be a market for it with touchscreens or if they can get uh, good mouse support, it might even be a good operating system to install on, say, an old netbook or something uh, to give it a new lease of life. Um, it seems to run quite light. Um, I've had no uh, performance problems at all. Um, that being said, though, an old netbook today is probably still slower than your average tablet and probably even a lot of phones, and especially in a couple of years' time, phones will start outperforming our old you know, netbooks and, and that kind of hardware. That being said, though, it does do some things that Linux doesn't do natively, like the Google Drive. It has a native Google Drive client. Um, it has uh, out-of-the-box YouTube support, although an increasing number of Linux distributions are coming with out-of-the-box Flash support and things. Um, actually, the Android operating system doesn't come with a at least an easy to access flash um adobe flash port the youtube videos and most of the other videos are actually non-flash um based so like for example the youtube app will take care of the youtube videos not flash um but yeah by and large i think it's a fantastic distribution i think it's a fantastic idea and i appreciate all of the work that's going into it um and what i you know and their website Okay, so it's not exactly newbie friendly. The whole operating system at the moment isn't newbie friendly, but it's very informative, and the inf information is laid out in a fantastic way. The installation it even gives you how, you know how tos on how to install uh, onto virtual machines and so forth. 
it's a great bit of fun. I recommend anyone who's interested in operating systems to uh, get a copy running on a virtual machine just for um, perspective. Maybe you might want to do some screen captures of um, some Android games or anything like that, and it could quite possibly be a lot more um, easier to do to do that on a, 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 a virtual machine rather than a um, actual portable device. So, um, like I said, fantastic, um, fantastic project. Um, by and large, I didn't see very many bugs on it, not nearly as many bugs as I was expecting. This is a slight criticism of it, but it's a criticism of Android in general, is that if you are someone who doesn't have a Google account, you're going to have a hard time running this operating system. It's very connected to the internet, as you might expect from a phone slash tablet based operating system. You can use it without a Google um, account, but it becomes somewhat difficult. Your um, applications are somewhat a little bit restricted because you might not have full access to the Google Play Store or whatever. You can still, of course, get um, uh, I think it's called F-Droid, which is a uh, software repository for the Android, uh, which um, I'll, th I'll check it out now. F-Droid, yeah, uh, which is an open source, free and open source repository for uh, Android, uh, which is uh, awesome. I've got it, and um, and it basically gives you open source. It's like a special um, uh, program, basically, um, an app store in your uh, in your android operating system that uh, exclusively provides op free and open source software um just in case you wanted to have more free and open source software on your on your android um and it works of course across all platforms as well um and i use it and i've had no problems with it whatsoever it's a good uh, good repository there and also it gives you often when you go through the app store and you search for an app to do a specific job um it'll give you so much ad supported software in the uh, uh, Google App Store whereas with the free uh, F-Droid all of the uh, software is free and open source and ad free from what I've seen of it so far so excellent stuff there across the board fantastic operating system with Android x86 I can't wait to see some of the more stable versions which uh, are more compatible across more lines of hardware um, and maybe at some point we will see the day where it might in fact be worth um, Installing a port of Android x86 onto maybe a netbook or um, or or a you know some other piece of hardware you know whereas this might actually have a use for you know like a like a serious use like a practical use um, and I hope you know and it'd be interesting to see if that uh, that comes around so guys if you have seen if you have tried this out if you have seen it if you like the look of it please let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below because. Uh, I like to hear from you guys. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very, very much for watching. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.